Hi, it's Jen from Dream Prague. One of my most requested and most dreaded video topics is people want me to compare the healthcare system in Czechia with that of the United States. I don't need this kind of grief. Everyone has a personal story about why their healthcare system sucks or why their healthcare system is the best in the world. But it's important to remember that it's impossible to get a full picture of an entire healthcare system from a few people's experiences. And you don't want to hear me read a Wikipedia page. So instead, in this video, we'll discuss some of the aspects of the US and the Czech healthcare systems that would surprise or frankly shock the people from the other country. Number one. No, that, that song is ruined for me, sorry. You can probably guess that US healthcare is more expensive than healthcare in Czechia, but you might not understand by exactly how much. First, we have to account for average incomes. The average American makes $34,000 a year and the average Czech makes almost $16,000 per year. So the median income of an American is about 2.15 times more. Because many Americans have really inadequate health insurance or none at all, they end up paying for a lot of their, their medical needs themselves. Czech viewers, hold on to your kloboki. The average cost for a day in the hospital is $5,000. A trip in an ambulance, anywhere from 400 to a few thousand dollars, depending on the treatment received and the distance. Think appendicitis is painful? How about paying for it? The average cost is $15,000. The most common reason that Americans go to the hospital is to give birth. And even with really good employer-based healthcare, the average out-of-pocket expenses is around $4,500. And that's if everything goes as planned. American viewers, prepare to weep. But not too much. Those tissues cost $25 each. While new American moms have to go very quickly back to work to help pay off some of that hospital bill, Czechs enjoy some of the most liberal parental leave that there is. Paid maternity leave in Czechia lasts 28 weeks. This is in stark contrast to the United States' zero paid maternity leave. Some lucky American women do have paid maternity leave that comes from their jobs. For higher paid workers, it's up to 12 weeks, and for lower paid workers, it's up to six weeks. During maternity leave in Czechia, women receive up to 70% of their income, depending on how long they take off of work, and their employer must keep their position open for them when they return. And parental leave can last up to three years. Yes, I said parental leave. This is available for the mother or the father to take. Czechia, the land of feminism. Who knew? Don't at me in the comments. If a parent takes up to three years, then they'll receive less than the 70%. It's just up to them. If socialized or socialism are trigger words for you, maybe you need to mix up your news sources every now and then. Not everything in Europe is socialist and not everything that's socialized is bad. Czechia has a compulsory insurance model, meaning that health insurance is mandatory. You either pay for it yourself or if you have an employer, then they help subsidize it. The government pays the contributions of a few other groups of people who have a harder time paying, like the elderly or the recently unemployed and a list of other groups. Similarly, in the United States, the government pays for the health care of the elderly, the very disabled, and the very poor. And the people in the middle have to pay for their own insurance or they have to get it through their employer and not every employer offers health insurance. Because health insurance is so expensive in the United States, many, many people in the middle don't have health insurance or they have health insurance that doesn't pay for very much. Approximately 33 million Americans do not have health insurance. They're just treating themselves at the drugstore. Oh, we'll get to the drugstore. In Czechia, both public and private insurance is available. In this video, I couldn't possibly get into all the tiers and levels of those types of insurance. So I'll just tell you a little bit what an American expat has to purchase. 
For a self-employed American expat like myself, it's mandatory to have full coverage public health insurance. Full coverage? That's gotta be expensive. Nope, it costs about $100 a month. For a comparison, the average American pays $456 a month. Yes, Kobevochi. Okay, so far it seems like I'm really favoring the check system. And for a lot of people, it's a really great system. But it also falls short in some ways. Czechia is a small country with a much smaller population. This means that people with rare conditions don't get the attention that they might get in a bigger country like Germany or the United States. There just isn't enough money to drive the education and research needed. And this is one of the most common complaints I hear from Czechs about their own healthcare system. And that's why this month I'm acting as the ambassador for kids with a disease called HAE. This disease causes painful swelling attacks in the limbs and the abdomen, in the face and even in the throat. These flare-ups are unexpected and recurring and currently there is no cure, there's only treatment. Children and teenagers with this disease suffer psychologically and socially, and the disease can bring a huge economic burden for their families. These kids are forced to miss a lot of school, and so they fall behind, and it limits their opportunities later in life. I'm working with an organization called HAE Junior, and they're working hard to improve the quality of life of these kids. Currently, kids with this disease are treated only in the hospital for the most severe flare-ups but they need more access to the innovative home treatments that are available to prevent them from the need to go to the hospital. By donating money to my own private link, and I'll put it below, you can help HAE Junior advocate for removing the barriers that exist in the Czech healthcare system and introduce the best international practices to help these kids. If you wanna learn more about HAE, check out the link below. And if you can't donate, follow them on social. I'll put those links below. Find out how else you can help. They'd be really happy that you did. Everyone who donates will go into a raffle to win a private online meeting with me. Um, you can use the opportunity to tell me about your experience in Czechia or in the United States, and you can even give me ideas for future videos you'd like me to make. I'll be choosing three winners on Dikov's Donny, that's November 26th. It's my way of thanking you for helping these kids. Back to the shocking differences. Maybe it has something to do with the fear of crippling debt, but Americans don't like going to the doctor. We'd rather treat our problems at home. Walk it off. Czechs, on the other hand, don't fear large fees or loss of wages. In Czechia, if you're sick, you are strongly encouraged to stay home. Kind of a novel idea, isn't it? Americans, when was the last time you stayed home from work for a common cold? Do you know anyone who stays home for a common cold? We power through that sh We're American! <coughs> no. I'm fine. Some spit. Czechia has better paid sick leave than we do in the United States. In the United States, you're not even guaranteed sick leave. In Czechia, all you need to do is get a note from your doctor. Kind of like when you're 12 years old and you get a note from mommy that tells your teacher you get to leave early that day. Now, I'm an independent contractor, but I've heard that when you start a new job as an employee, you get a health checkup in Czechia and you bring that health checkup to your new employer to show them that you're like in good shape. Is it true? Hello? Like, medical privacy? I mean, whatever. I even had to get a healthcare checkup in order to get my driver's license. And the doctor didn't check my sight and she didn't check my hearing, but she took blood. It's kind of weird. So if Americans aren't going to the doctor, what are they doing? Self-medicating. And I'm not talking about opioids, and sadly, those are available too. I'm talking about the glorious assortment of over-the-counter medication. And where do we get these medications? Welcome to the American drugstore. Seriously, it's glorious. American drugstores are usually open 24 hours a day and they have everything you need and everything you didn't even know you needed. In the very back of the drugstore, that's where you'll find the actual pharmacist and that's where the really good drugs are. This zone in the back is what checks are familiar with in their own pharmacies. 
but the vast land between the checkout counter and the pharmacist is where the magic happens. It's got everything you need to treat anything from the common cold to a basic amputation. Picture a DM, a Lacarna, a gas station, a Vicerca, and a Chibo all in one store. And they're in almost every town in America. And in big cities, they're on almost every block. When I was 10, I used to walk about three kilometers with my little sister just to hang out in the drugstore and check out makeup and toys and shampoo and seasonal sporting goods, magazines, school supplies. I think they even sold my favorite books. And most importantly, the aisles are filled with very strong medication that you can't get in Czechia. And you don't have to explain your embarrassing ailment to a Czech pharmacist who's just gonna judge you and prescribe you some like herbal mushroom drops that don't even work. Americans, in Czechia, you cannot even buy NyQuil anywhere, really. I've never seen it, and if your parents try to ship it to you, it will be confiscated at customs. I know this for a fact. Czechs, NyQuil is an American drug that we all rely heavily upon all winter. In Czechia, when you go to the pharmacy, you either need to have a prescription or you have to tell the pharmacist what your ailment is, which is great when you don't speak the local language, a lot of charades involved, and they're just gonna give you something that is absolutely not strong enough for your American body. Just buy a bottle of Slivovitsa and stay home. So where do Americans get this idea that they can just play doctor on themselves? On TV, of course. And I'm not talking about the medical dramas we love to watch, like ER and Grey's Anatomy and General Hospital and House and Doogie Howser and MASH and... Okay, maybe we are obsessed with medical TV, but I'm actually talking about the pharmaceutical ads that you see in every commercial break. This is the biggest shock for Americans returning home after living abroad to just be bombarded with ads for medications. Drug companies in America spend over $5 billion a year on these advertisements. So patients just walk into their doctor's office and demand a medication that they saw on television because the guy who took it, you know, it cured his heartburn or whatever. Speaking of Americans wanting to move abroad, this video is sponsored by Expatrial. Feeling stuck, bored, tired of the same old thing, do you find yourself endlessly scrolling through travel Instagram? Expatrial could be right for you. Expatrial has been shown to help individuals restart their lives in new countries. With Expatrial, individuals are able to forget 90% of the problems they leave behind in their own countries. Possible side effects include butchering the local language, excess facial hair growth, becoming insufferable at family gatherings, early onset nostalgia, and more. Do not consume with alcohol. Ask your doctor if Expatrial is right for you. See what I mean? Convincing, right? I'm going to take a wild guess that the term bedside manner does not have a direct translation in Czech. We'll see what my translator comes up with. And let's all give Olga a round of applause for translating this incredibly difficult script. We Americans usually find Czech doctors and nurses to be distant, cold, and patronizing. Unlike American doctors, Czech doctors don't care if we like them. These doctors have more education than us, and they think that we're overreacting and wasting their time. They're only gonna tell you what they think you need to know, like, they have a lot of other patients, so please hurry up and take off your pants. Expat internet groups are filled with people looking for nice doctors who won't make them feel stupid. A gynecologist who won't be rude and talk down to them. Horror stories of dentists who didn't even say hello before they stuck their instrument in your mouth. And most surprising to all American female expats is the lack of pain medication that doctors here give when a woman is giving birth. Epidurals are way less common in Czechia than they are in the United States. I've heard a few stories where the doctor delays and delays and delays until, whoops, it's too late, no epidural for you. The basic message is, doctors know best, and you are a weak American who cannot handle pain. 
that was that was a Russian accent, I'm sorry. American doctors are just a little bit friendlier and they at least pretend to take your opinion into consideration. First, because they're American, so they're natural people pleasers. And second, we will sue the ever-living pants off of anyone, including our doctors, who give us bad service. And we will definitely ask to speak to the manager. Like, count on it. This has been far from a complete comparison of the two healthcare systems in these two countries. But as you can see, some of the differences can be shocking. The Czechs have a saying, ne moc si ne vibira, which translates roughly, I believe, into diseases don't discriminate. People also don't choose their nationality or their country of birth. If you have a rare disease like HAE, it's hard to be in a country like Czechia where there's less availability of the most recent treatments and information. So I hope you'll donate some money at the link below. And if not, definitely connect with them on social and see what you can do to help. And if you're sick in America, it's best that you are either pretty wealthy or you have a very generous employer that will give you some decent sick pay and pay for your health insurance. And if that's your situation, ask your doctor if expatrial is right for you. Tak, uvidíme se příští týden. Ahoj!